Hey guys, uh, today we're going to talk about Lesson 1-7, Ratio and Rate Problems. Today's date's 11-14-19. Um, so uh, we have two pages of notes, and the first page is going to be dealing with uh, ratio problems, and then the second page is going to be dealing with rate problems. So solving ratio problems. Okay, so then we're going to have three different strategies that we could try. First one's going to be use a bar diagram. Not my favorite, but I'm kind of warming up to it. Then we've got use equivalent fractions. We talked about that before. Oops, didn't want to write. There we go. And then the third thing we could try is a ratio table. Okay, so let's uh, kind of look at how I would do each of these. So it says four out of five people prefer creamy over chunky peanut butter. And there are 120 people shopping in the grocery store. Use a survey to predict how many people in the store would prefer creamy peanut butter. So let's start with a bar diagram. Now, with the ratio of 4 to 5, it's a little different than what we're thinking about. So in a bar diagram, it's taken all the people that's in the survey and broken it into five groups. So that's what I'm going to do is have a big bar with five sections to it. One, two, three, four, five. Okay? And all together, that's 120 people. And the ones that chose creamy are going to be four of those sections. Those are the creamy people. Which makes this teeny little section here going to be the chunky people. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take 120 and divide it by 5, so I know what goes into each one of those boxes. So 5 goes into 12 twice, which is 10, with 2 left over, and 5 goes into 24 times evenly. So what I find out is 24 is in each one of these sections. So if I want to figure out how many people choose creamy, I'm just going to take that 24, and there's four sections of it that chose the creamy. So if I multiply them, I get 96. So I would be able to conclude 96 people surveyed prefer creamy peanut, or, yeah, creamy peanut butter. Okay? All right, so that's bar diagram. Let's use equivalent fractions. So we have 4 out of 5 prefer. So what the 4 means is people who like the creamy, and the 5 means all people. So we're going to set it equal to, and then we said there's 120 people that were in the survey. So then my job is to try to figure out how to get from 5 to 120. So I can do that off to the side. And if you remember, we kind of did that already. That gives me 2, 24. So if I multiply 5 by 24, then I would multiply 4 by 24, and that's where I would get 96. <clears throat> so that's a different way of doing this survey. Um, I could also have set that up in a ratio table and kind of stepped myself, like for example, let's do creamy, all people, and then we had a 4, 5, and we end with a 120. So some things I might want to try is to multiply by 2 to get to the number that ends in 10. So I get 8 tenths. And then to get from 10 to 120, I would multiply by 12. 
and I would get to the same answer of 96, okay? So I'm not going to do all three strategies every single time because I think that's going to take too long. So I'm just going to, that's one example. Let's just work on this next one. So a survey found that 12 out of every 15 people in the U.S. prefer eating at a restaurant over cooking at home. If 400 people selected eating at a restaurant, how many people took the survey? So I'm going to use a ratio table on this one because I really like ratio tables. So let's do, let's see, a restaurant. People surveyed. So if you notice, these are part to holes. Okay. All the people surveyed and the part that are choosing restaurant eating, okay? All right, so we had 12 people prefer, uh, in the United States, that's a lot of people, uh, prefer to eat out over cooking at home. They must have a good job. If 400 people, oops, sorry, selected eating at a restaurant, so the 400 goes up here, yeah, baby. All right, so now I gotta figure out what I need to do. So um, I'm gonna try, I'm gonna scale back. Let's see what scaling back does. Because 12 doesn't go into 400. But I think if I divide both by three, that's gonna give me a four and a five. Now, I know exactly what to do. I'm going to multiply top and bottom by 100. Ooh, that was nice. And I get the magic number of 500. So how many people took the survey? I'm going to write that answer below here. 500 people took this survey. Now you can solve this other means, but this is just one of the strategies. Okay, let's go on to rate problems. Rate problems. So rate we don't have as many strategies on rate problems. Uh, let's see. We are going to choose rate problems. So the two strategies I would probably try for rate problems would be use a ratio table. That guy always works, right? Well, that's not true. Sometimes the numbers are not pretty. No matter how much you scale up or scale back, it just doesn't seem to ever work. And then use a unit rate and multiplication. And then multiplication. So if I can get the denominator down to 1, then it's easy to make that denominator any number I need it to be. Okay? So over here, there are 300, or sorry, there are 800 calories, 810 calories in three scoops of vanilla ice cream. How many calories are there in seven scoops? Okay. So I'm going to write this. I'm going to do a, a unit rate on this one. So I have 810 calories, three scoops. So if I get this down to a rate by making the denominator equal to 1, let's see, so I get one scoop on the bottom, <clears throat> and then I've got 3 goes into 8 twice, which is 6 with 2 left over, 3 goes into 21 7 times evenly, and there's a leftover 0. So I get there's 270 calories in one scoop. So how do I go to the next level? Well, remember what I want is I want seven scoops. So I'm going to multiply by seven. So that's going to end up giving me 0, 49, 14, and 4 is 18. Oh, my gosh. This reminds me of eating a trough at Farrell's. So I get 1,890 scoops, or 1,890 calories in seven scoops. Yikes. So write that as a sentence. There are 1,890 calories 
in seven scoops of ice cream, of vanilla ice cream. Oh, just think, that's vanilla. What would happen if you added, like, you know, chocolate bits in it or peanut butter cups or whatever? Ooh, that's your calories for the day right there. But seven scoops, that's disgusting. While resting, a human takes in about five liters of air in 30 seconds. At this rate, how many liters of air does he take in during 150 seconds? <clears throat> Excuse me. So let me go ahead and write down what we have to begin with. Five liters air. Looks like layer, huh? Seconds. And we want it to be... 150 seconds. Okay, well, I'm going to use a ratio table this time. Uh, so I'm going to say airs measured in liter, time measured in seconds. And let's see, so we have 5 over 30, and we want it to get 150. Oh, that's simple. See, that's pretty easy. If I just multiply 30 by 5, I get that. So if I multiply him by 5, I'll get the number I need. Okay, that was easy. All right, so my answer to this one is uh, in 150 seconds, a human... takes in one, let's see, 25 liters of air. So there you go. Not so hard. All right, have a great day, guys. We'll talk about this tomorrow. Bye.